All right, our next comic. He comes to us from Pasadena. If you get out much, you may have seen him at the Comedy Store in Hollywood. You may have seen him at the Ice House. But fuck those places, because tonight he's here with us at Flappers. Please welcome to the stage Mr. Dilip Katri. All right, Flappers, how you doing? So my name is Dilip. I'm from India. Everywhere I go, people expect me to talk with an Indian accent. So I don't want to disappoint you. I'm sure you've heard this voice before. Hello. Thank you for calling Yahoo IT support. I am pleased to help you. My name is Brad Pitt. And I know you've heard this voice before. Thank you for calling Bank of America. I am pleased to help you. My name is George Clooney. I'm sorry, but you don't have any money left in your account. There are three words that Indians use consistently, and they don't know how to use them. Basically, totally, and confused. And they never pronounce confused correctly. They say confused. So how many of you go and visit your Indian doctor? You go visit your Indian doctor, you have your conversation with your Indian doctor, and he says, well, basically, you have a problem with your heart, but it is totally very much not very much sure, so we are going to do some testing, but basically we're not sure what the problem is going to be, but totally we're very sure that it's going to be a problem. So at the end of the day, what we are basically saying to you is that we are totally confused. <laughs> so I have to wait for my nurse to find out. Another thing about Indians is that they don't understand certain American expressions. I spent my whole life trying to explain to my father the meaning of the word pissed off. <laughs> he never got it. He always just say, what is the meaning of pissed off? If I'm going to be mad, I'm going to be pissed on. <laughs> because I want to piss on, not off. <laughs> so I have a very interesting background, actually. See, I am Indian ethnically, but I was born in Nigeria, which under federal law, makes me an African-American. <laughs> so to all of you African-Americans in the audience, my brothers, <laughs> we are together. So ethnically, I'm Indian. Legally, I'm black. But I sound like a white guy. <laughs> so when I go apply for a job, I'm a white guy. When I have a computer problem, I'm an Indian. And when it comes to meeting women, hey, baby, what's up? <laughs> Especially white women. So I didn't realize that I was a Nigerian until I was in the fifth grade, and we were practicing for this glee club. And the teacher was at the piano, and she said, okay, everybody's going to come up and sing a song. So the first person that went up was little Mary. Mary got up, very cute little girl got up and sat, and Mary had a little lamb. Everybody said, oh, that was so cute. Then little Robert got up, and Robert sang, row, row, row your boat. Then I got up, the teacher was at the piano, and said, okay, what are you going to sing for us? And I stood up, and I said, ula, 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 ula. <laughs> That's African. Everybody in the audience, everybody at the class went, whoa, this dude's black. <laughs> So I said, let me try this African thing out, you know. So I applied for some jobs as an African. Put down on the job application. The first job I tried out for was a pizza delivery man in New York City. The guy looked at me and said, black, huh? What, are you crazy? What's the matter with you? What's the problem? You ain't black. What's with the towel on the head? What's the deal? <laughs> Next job I applied for was as a truck driver was interviewed by a very nice lady from New Jersey, Miss Edith Stein. Oh my God, you're black. You say you're black. You're not black. You're not black, honey. I'm telling you, you're not black. What are you, Indian? You're from India? You're Indian. Oh my God, Louisa, he's Indian. Oh my God. Do you own a casino? <laughs> and then the most serious job that I interviewed for, which was for a university position, and I put down African American, got for the interview, was interviewed by Miss Shinikwa Watson. And you know, 
Black women have really, really distinct features. When they, they, you know when a black woman does not like you. She looked at me when I got up there and she went. <laughs> she looked at my resume and she said, experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Qualifications. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Race. Mm-mm. <laughs> I don't think so, baby. You ain't one of us, honey. Because it's tough to be a black man. But there are certain advantages. So let's talk about something more serious. Relationships. This is a favorite topic. How many of you are married? Applause, please. Oh, you poor souls. Well, the first thing is that women expect us men to be honest. They want us to be honest, but they know that we lie. So I actually tried this once. I actually had a girlfriend at one time, and I was going to be 100% honest with her. So the first thing she asked me, I'm going to be 100% honest, we went shopping. You've heard this question before. She puts on the dress, and she says, does this make me look fat? Be honest. And I said, no, you looked fat before you put that on. <laughs> And the last thing I remember was a chair flying towards my head. <laughs> then we went out for dinner. And she said, this beautiful woman walked by, we were having dinner, and she said, oh, you like her, don't you? And I said, well, just her legs. That was a shoe flying towards me. <laughs> so, I think what we need to do in order to be completely honest with each other, we need to rewrite our marriage vows. So I wrote you some new marriage vows. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today for this execution, I mean, excuse me, this joining of two souls. For the bride, do you take this schmuck to be your husband? Do you promise to control his money and everything he owns from this point forward? Do you take his mother to become your mother? And she's a bitch, by the way. I can see that resonates with a few of you. <laughs> and for the groom, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You remember those rights of freedom of speech and the Bill of Rights? Forget about that. From this day forward, you own nothing. That's what this should be. So I'm going to close with one special little prayer for you, because after all, I am from India. <laughs> this has been developed over centuries, centuries, thousands of years. Brought to you, brought to you directly at Flappers. So we're having a rough economy, right? Things are rough, economy's rough, things are tough, so you feel a little, you know, you need to reach out for that special spiritual quality. So we do a special prayer in India, a special yoga prayer, you do it at the end of the day, you fold your hands, and you seek, and you say, Om, I don't give a shit. It works, really. Thank you very much. Keep that applause going for Philip, everybody.